Hello, Salem. I'm your mayor, Chuck Bennett. We're three months into the new year, and I have lots of great information to share with you about the wonderful things happening in our community. It may be March, but it's not too early to start thinking about summer and getting out and about to enjoy our parks because guess what? Summer events and activities are booking now. Make your reservations now for our softball, kickball, and summer recreation programs. You can make reservations online anytime through the City of Salem website or do so in person beginning March 14th. You can also look forward to movies and music at Riverfront Park. This summer, you'll be able to enjoy the return of Movies in the Park and the River Rock Concert Series, which happen on Wednesday nights. These events make for a perfect evening in our beautiful park along the Willamette River. And there's more. Public Works Day is back on June 17th. Join us at Riverfront Park between 1030 and 2 and learn about the work being done by the Public Works Department. It's an all-ages event where you can see all the equipment to keep this city working, like backhoes, plows, and dump trucks. There'll be hands-on activities for kids, as well as equipment demonstrations, like the popular water pipe repair demo. It'll be a great time. Of course, your source for all these details is the City of Salem's website. Then, to round out the summer, we'll be having a big celebration for the 50th anniversary of the Civic Center, also known as City Hall. The Vern Miller Civic Center officially turns 50 on August 18th, 2022. We've started the reminiscing on the social media and invite people to share memories and photos of Salem in the early 70s. We set up a special web page for you to upload these recollections and images from the decades past. So join along as we tell the Civic Center story through art, architecture, people, and history all leading up to the big celebration. Next, we'll hear all the latest from YMCA CEO Tim Sinatra. He'll give us an update on the building project as well as the services they provide to the community. Well, Tim, welcome. I'm really, uh, really glad you're here and that we have a chance to talk about the why. It's certainly one of the uh, biggest happenings in our downtown is watching the YMCA uh, regrow mm -hmm. at its old location. How is the project going? How's everything going on it? It looks like really well, but yeah, it's exciting. Mayor, thank you for having us, and thank you for the support. By you know, being located as a YMCA downtown is very unique. Yeah, in the old days, that's what it was, but now it's really wise are going more into the suburbs and so on. So we appreciate the opportunity to continue to grow in the original, one of the original spots that we were downtown. It's going well, the, you know, this Y is at a neat spot in the history of the life cycle. Been around 130 years, third oldest Y on the West Coast, San Francisco, Portland, and then Salem. Wow. Yeah, and it's, it's special to still be in that spot. This spot was 1926. We actually were on Chemeketa Street and commercial, the original spot. Uh, and I think that was 1901. Um, so exciting to be here and then to have the rebirth of the new facility yeah. that's really built to be relevant to the needs today with an eye on the future. And so the progress of it is going really well considering the supply chain, COVID, all of that. We're still on track for July to open up to the community. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because it is, it just feels like you, it's uh, all of a sudden it's there. Mm -hmm. uh, I drive by it uh, almost every day coming uh, from my home to City Hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just been remarkable. It seems like every day it changes. And I know you just went through a really aggressive fundraising mm -hmm, mm -hmm. challenge. Okay, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, you know, so the you know we started back in 2017. I came on in July 2020, of really committing to it's time to build the new building, get the capital campaign going, uh, and and it started off um, well, and then COVID hits. Yeah, you know which just changed everything because when you have a capital campaign of raising the amount of money we we're raising you you can't do that over zoom you have to have one-on-one -on -one meetings you have to sometimes bigger group to get the awareness out get the excitement so it was definitely challenging but what we found was because of this why has been around so long 130 years 
the loyalty and commitment of people who've been touched by it in some way, program services, whether childcare, maybe they learned to swim there, they were a member, that there was a large group out there waiting to really step forward, really to come on home and help yeah. out. And so we were really excited about how many people stepped up for the Y, remembered how the Y impacted them or their families or the community at one point in time, even if they haven't been to the Y in a while, and how everyone stepped up to help us reach goal. Because if you had asked me in July 2020 how we were getting from where we were at in our campaign to where we're at now, <laughs> I wasn't sure other than just, you know, really working hard. I always talk about divine intervention and this, just people who are yeah. really amazing community members stepping forward. So we're excited to be where we're at and um, to be able to open debt free really allows us to lower a lot of our s program service fees, do a lot more outreach and really be relevant to some of the neediest priorities that our community is experiencing. We all uh, have had our experiences with the Y. I, I did uh, water safety instructor and <laughs> lifeguard training at the Y back in the 70s when mm -hmm. I, well, actually 60s mm -hmm. when I was in college. Uh, what, are, what are programs that are new? I mean, we all think about the, the walking track, the gym, mm -hmm. the, the pool, uh, and then now what? What, what's going on at the Y? What'll be new, different? What, what, is, what are the things the community doesn't expect is sure. occurring at the Y? It's a great question. You know, when I came on as the CEO, a lot of people said, well, what's the vision for the mm -hmm. future of the Y? And I said, well, no, no one person should create a vision. It should be the community, yeah. the partners, you know, the parents, families, so on. And, uh, and they said, well, that's good, Tim, but you're still the CEO. You know, you're supposed to have an answer. Yeah, so answer. <laughs> so I said, the answer is the future looks a lot like the past. I said, if you look back in our historical time and the pictures that we have, you see caring for a community, opportunities for people to be their best, looking at some of the most social, socially challenging priorities, and even breaking some of the norms. So Young Men's Christian Association, you see women all over the place, even right. in our earliest time. You know, so it was about the greater good for the community. So when we look towards the future, we will still have the foundation of all the things that made us successful and were needed. But we're looking at how do we be relevant as a social impact organization where stability, health and well-being is r literally a thread through everything we do. And so it's really about intentionality in all that we do in some of the basics to some of the more um, things where we're helping families and stability. Yeah. In my 32 years working in communities, I see that the family unit and, and the structure is breaking down. So the more we can provide supports for those family, because if families are strong, everything else starts to work out, both as you go down to early childhood and e even into aging supports. So we put that at the centerpiece of all that we're doing and the commitment in doing that is gonna look a little bit different because we're really considering all the constraints and barriers on the family and how we can support that with different services, supports, and activities. So as you open, uh, if you haven't been to the Y uh, in 50 years, <laughs> mm -hmm. come on down and, and see what's here that may fit into your lifestyle at this point in your life. It's kind of like, uh, bring yourself to the Y and, and uh, tell us what you need and we probably have something that'll help you out on it, is that? That's it, that's exactly, and I like the way you phrased that because we see the Y as the third place. You've got home, you've got work, and then the Y. Yeah. So even like when I talk about families, we're gonna have a family fitness program where at 5.30 or 6, you could show up as a family, you'll be in the gym with a bunch of other families and be doing this fun Disney-fied type <laughs> fitness. Great. Finish that, go to the micro cafe in the building, get the nice wraps and salads, go up to the top roof deck, enjoy that as a family. The kids can play yard games on the AstroTurf up there, take showers, go home. So a one-stop shop to really have everything you need, not just for families, but for other people who need a place to be and belong. So I'm, I'm the other part of this, and I, I think this is one of the uh, questions folk have, is they can see where the Y is. Across the street is another construction site going on. Uh, I happen to be aware it's a 34-unit veterans center. What, 
what's going, that's a whole new program. Uh, the Y used to have uh, inexpensive apartments. Right. This is a whole new area. I'm, I'm real interested in what you're doing with the veterans program. Well, you know, it's housing, and, and you yeah. know how important housing is, yeah. and you're an advocate for housing across the city, and we thank you for that. And it, it's keeping in tradition of affordable housing, because we've had housing for 90 years. It's not right. a new idea. It's been there for 90 years, uh, providing low-income apartments. In fact, Senator Courtney comes up when he, in 1969, July, he stayed in one of our apartments. Oh yeah, no, I, I knew guys staying in those apartments uh, over the years. When I was in the legislature, right. there was another legislator that lived over there as well. It, yeah. it was real interesting. So the board wanted to continue with that. Uh, yeah. The important. So then the question was, and it's right across the street, what's the target population? Who can we support? And really the veterans was very important for right. many reasons. In fact, if you look back historically, YMCA National, even in World War I, you can see YMCA signs in the trenches because Y staff would go and bring things of home that made them feel wow. comfortable. And so caring for our veterans is a historical note, not just here locally, but nationally as a YMCA. And all of our veteran families in the new 34 unit um, complex there will have free memberships to the YMCA, literally 20 yards across the street, to really wrap around everything they need to really get back on their feet and live their best life. You mentioned veterans' families, mm -hmm. it, so it'll have more than sure. studio units. It's going to be more complex. There's two, two bedrooms. We have eight two-bedrooms, and then the rest are all one bedroom. So if there's children living in there and so on, we want to make sure that we can provide childcare so yeah. that if some of the veterans need to get back to work or you know have an opportunity is really what do you need to be your best and really honor your service to this country, this community. How do people apply? The, we'll have a coordinated entry. We're working with some okay. of our partners uh, right now to, to design that, to make sure we're really meeting the population who needs. So there'll be more information on our websites and a whole veterans housing website that'll pop up soon. But really we have close to like 10 to 15 partners who work with veterans alone okay. in housing and supports who are really guiding and, and helping and saying, we'll stand by you, you know, along the way. The neat thing is our partners have told us that if there were four more of these, you know, 34 unit complexes, that we would effectively solve homelessness for veterans in this community. Wow. Which I've never heard anyone say that, you know, there was an end game. That, that there's actually you know, a solution. A solution. To this. And it's yeah. quantifiable. And That's, so we're 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 happy to be a part of it. That's fantastic. Well, July is going to be a very exciting month around here, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that uh, opening. And uh, congratulations! I, I don't know. I, there's not a lot more to say when hmm. you can accomplish a tremendous goal uh, like redoing an institution like the Y uh, to bring it uh, up to a. Uh, 2021st century That's right. uh, needs. So, Tim, thank you. Thank you to the Y Board and you for your tremendous work in the community. Thank you, Mayor. We thank appreciate you. the opportunity. And thank you for joining us.